What's up warriors? Welcome to Kiyoshi's Kitchen. Nope, not cooking today. Today we're going over a list of what ready.gov suggests that you should have in your home for a emergency or disaster preparedness kit that should last you 72 hours in the event that you needed to shelter in place. So I made a video a few weeks back on a, a go bag or a bug out bag or an emergency preparedness bag, survival bag, the bag that you would grab in the event that you got like a moment's notice um, that you had to like evacuate your home or wherever you are and you had to get in the car and just go. And we went over some of the, the guidelines of what stuff you should have in a kit and some people were asking about uh, my kit specifically and again my kit's like like tailored to me whereas your kit should be tailored to you. So in all the questions that came up and a lot of the awesome comments that came up the more common thing than bugging out is bugging in. So if like there was a, a hurricane coming, you're going to stay inside your house and, you know, tough it out. If there was a, you know, blizzard or, or any of those other natural type of things or, uh, you know, some, some sickness or something like that going around where well, you're going to be in your house for a while. But the idea is to go through the list of what they suggest that you should have in your kit for an emergency, for some sort of natural disaster, in the event that you needed to shelter in place for 72 hours. Let's get after it. What's up, Warriors? This is Kiyoshi Dave Herman with Five Elements Tactical Training, here to share with you some warrior skills and drills that anyone can learn and everyone should know. If you're new to the channel, welcome and thanks for stopping by. If you already follow us on social media and that's how you find your way over to this channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the bell notification button and the little thing where it says all notifications so YouTube will let you know when the next video drops and you get all sorts of cool content from here as well. All right, so the kit. Again, this is based on ready.gov's recommendations for sheltering in place for 72 hours. Everything you see here is all my stuff and they're from different kits that I have. Obviously, if I was going to shelter in place, then I have access to my car because my car is here. If I have access to um, my, my long-term uh, food storage and uh, first aid kit and stuff like that because I'm here, it's here, it's all within reach. I don't have anything outside that if it was a snowstorm or, or torrential rain that I have to be going outside to the elements except for my car. Um, everything is pretty much right where I know it's going to be, right where I put it so I would remember where it would be as part of the plan and, um, and enough to last me as long as possible depending on how you would ration your food and other supplies. First thing on the list is water. So water is for, obviously for drinking, for cooking, for washing stuff, for washing yourself. And the rule of thumb is one gallon per person per day. So if you were gonna be um, prepping for 72 hours, I found this, I have a bunch of them. There are, it's a three gallon jug that's got a handle on it. I could grab and go with it. I could stack, I have them stacked sideways, believe it or not. And uh, they've been stacked like that for quite a while, no leaking. I also have some five gallon jugs, but if you think of it, one, one three gallon jug is enough for me for three days. I have little kids. Are they going to use as much water? No. But if I'm the one doing all the work, I might be using more water than the suggested gallon per day. And I might need to, as a family, kind of ration and share and help one another. Next thing on the kit is food for three days. Now, if it was a blackout, like you had a hurricane that knocked out the power, blizzard knocked out the power, heat wave that knocked out the power, whatever the, the cause of the power failure is, your refrigerator, that's gonna be the first stuff to go. So you'd probably try to eat and drink as much of that stuff as you could, get your calories up maybe. Uh, if you have a, a gas barbecue or a charcoal barbecue or some other means of cooking the food, maybe cook as much as you can, eat as much as you can, and be full for as long as you can before you have to go to the stuff that you, uh, would be in the cabinets and the shelves and whatnot. All right, so when it comes to having non-perishable goods, a lot of the stuff you probably already have in the house, I mean, you ever been like, oh man, I'm so hungry and there's nothing in the fridge. But if you got hungry enough, you probably have enough stuff in your cabinets and, uh, you know, your pantry and whatnot. You want to have some protein, right? Some veggies, some carbs, some starches, some healthy stuff, some sweet stuff. Stuff that's going to kind of like uh, keep the kids calm, keep the kids cool, all that type of stuff. Cereal lasts forever. Pasta lasts forever. Maybe not forever, but I mean, it won't go bad in three days. It won't go bad in probably in a month. If it was the month, you, you could still eat that. Peanut butter and jelly, easy stuff. Mac and cheese. Now this, here's the thing. If you had to get a pot out of your, uh, you know, your, your kitchen and put it over, like a, make your own fire in the backyard or get the gas grill going or if you had like a camping stove or something, if you had to boil water, well, you could use this water, of course, right? Make some pasta or, you know, um, you can make some mac and cheese for the kids. Simple stuff. Other things that are already cooked, 
It's in a can. Is that the best form of eating a vegetable? No, but you can whip up a meal in two seconds by just, you know, using the stuff that's in a can. Stuff like beans, veggies, what's this, olive, you know, olive sauce, protein drinks. Again, you want to have stuff that's going to be meet your, like, recommended daily requirements or allowances, whatever they call that. Of just, you know, hey, if you're going to be outside shoveling out snow or you're going to be outside, like, you know, chopping up trees that fell down from some crazy storm, you want to make sure that you have good fuel, good, uh, you know, something that you're going to want to eat, something that you're going to like to eat, and something that's going to kind of keep you going. Another option is... Um, I keep these, so these I use when I go to survival school and camping trips and hiking trips. Real simple, you boil some water, dump it in there, leave it in there for five minutes, and you got a meal. A little bit pricey, but, but they're good, and they're easy, and they're light. Um, these I keep for like, again, if the, if the prescription was to run for it, well, I keep these where I could throw them in my car right away, and each one is, I don't know, a few day supply for me and my family, and I have a few bins of them, and it's a bunch of these in a kit that you just grab and throw in the car or that you could keep in your own home, camping, bug out, location, wherever, wherever you're going to have it. All right, moving right along. Transistor radio. Now, obviously, you have, if you have something that's a two-way radio, that, that's better, like walkie-talkies and stuff like that, and I got some radios for that too. But something as simple as, like, the power went out um, and you want to catch the news. Again, if you, for whatever reason, you didn't have Wi-Fi service or data service or whatever, and you had to go back to, like, Old school, put, I keep the batteries out so the batteries don't get funky and they don't get the inside of the radio funky. But when you need it, you put the batteries in, you pull the antenna up, for those of you that have never seen one of these before, you turn it on, you scroll through the AM and FM stations till you get to like, uh, you know, oh man, there's the news. That, let, let's get some inf information about what's going on. But also if you have one that has like the NOAA, uh, when you at, check out Amazon or your local... Uh, you know, Home Depot or something like that. You check it out and it's got like the weather stations and marine radio and all that type of stuff. Next on the list is a flashlight. So I have a few different types of flashlights here. And um, the first one is like your typical, these are like five bucks at Home Depot. And I always have this next to the breaker box downstairs. We have one in the kitchen. Uh, I have them all over the house because they're quick and easy. They're bright cold that even in the dark you'll be able to spot that. Turn it on and it's bright enough and, and you can see your way around. Um, I'm a big believer of headlamps. So something that if you needed to, uh, if you needed to take this and put it on and have your hands free to turn off the gas or turn off the water or uh, put out a fire or you in the dark you're using a, a saw or some sort of other tool to, um, I like that it's got the red on there also. But again, hands free lighting. This is another one that I picked up at Costco or BJ's. I got this a while back and uh, you got high, low, red, flashing red. And off and the more you bring it out the brighter it is the more you put it away uh, the dimmer it is you can hang it you can put it up it's a lantern again it runs on AAA batteries I try to make all my gear uh, work on this is double A's but um, most of my gear I should say is on triple A's so when it comes to that I don't want to just have my lights and then no batteries so you keep a good amount of spare batteries in the bin in the bucket with your stuff ready to go now the next one on here is a whistle to signal for help which um, I have one in my backpack. Everybody in my family, in their go bag, there's a whistle. You may get like tired of yelling or screaming. You may not feel like, you may feel like you don't have the energy to yell or scream. Um, there's a million reasons why you may not be able to scream for help or yell for help. But if you could breathe, you could use a whistle. Like the typical whistle that the lifeguard at the pool or the, the referee on the soccer field has, that whistle. You get a few of those and Every kit should have one, every backpack should have one, and the prime use for it is to signal for help. All right, next, dust masks. So now, I know that I've had these long before uh, 2020, right? And we just had them, I always, because if you were, uh, you know, walking and there was volcanic activity and there's ash or dust in the air, if there was some sort of like uh, wildfires and there's ash or dust in the air, if you're walking through where there's just like questionable air quality or there's particles in the air and you're trying to keep them out to preserve your lungs and your breathing uh, ability then you go with these and i just i've i've had them by the boxes for a long time and we, we went down a lot over the last year because we were using them a lot over the last year first aid kit so real simple this is a first aid kit that you can get at like cvs uh target walmart you know your local pharmacy you can definitely get it on amazon and it's you know a handful of items that i always kind of take the ones that you get in the store and beef them up a little bit i'll add extra um band-aids or you know the, the band-aids that i like and 
whatever. Make sure there's a tweezers and the thermometer and, and other items in there that it, it may not come with. But again, this little thing goes with us on vacation. It's always close to the bedroom. It's, uh, it's always close by and close at hand. Now, the first aid kit I always have in my house, which has all of this stuff and then some. And there's stuff in there for like bumps and bruises and boo-boos and cuts and scrapes and burns and sunburn and uh, some trauma stuff as well, like tourniquets and, and stop the bleed type of uh, trauma products. Again, there's a whole, I have a whole video on this one. If you're interested in that, check it out. Um, but this is a first aid kit and this is a first aid kit. And then I have other first aid kits again in all of our kits, all of our bags. But at the very least, you should have something like this. And it's always close by that if you need it, you can. And the more you realize like, oh man, I wish I had more room. You'll go to something bigger, something bigger, something bigger. And this thing is jam packed. But again, I'm the one that packed it. I know where everything is. I use an orange toolbox because it is orange and it's very easy to spot. I use blue tape because it contrasts with the orange and just wrote first aid kit on there. So anybody that walks by knows what it is. And if I say, go grab the orange toolbox, they know to, where to find it, what to grab, what they're looking for. And um, first aid kit is a very important thing to have in any kit for your vehicle, for your home, for your everyday carry and so on. All right, so the next thing is plastic sheeting. Now there's all different types of plastic sheeting. You can get big rolls of plastic sheets. You could use a tarp depending on your need. Um, I like to use contractor garbage bags because there's a lot of different uses for them. Um, if you were looking to use it more for plastic sheeting, you could always just cut them open and turn it into a big sheet. Uh, you could use duct tape, which is uh, another thing that's on the list. Um, duct tape has a million uses. You could kind of, if you couldn't find a tarp or you didn't have a tarp, you could make a tarp out of contractor bags and some duct tape by tape and the whole thing together. So the plastic sheeting could be for like sealing your windows if there was something very questionable in the air around you. Maybe seal yourself off in a room to seal the ducts. Again, using plastic sheeting and duct tape. Plastic sheeting and duct tape work hand in hand. Like just, just very important stuff. Again, a lot, a lot of uses for this. Uh, check out my, my, um, the 10 C's of survival video series. And this is one of the 10 C's, um, ha having some sort of cargo tape that's super strong, um, for tying stuff down, tying stuff up to, to bandage your wound to, there's a million uses for it. It's even flammable. If you needed to get a fire going in a pinch and you had a lighter or some sort of other combustion, combustion device, you could use this as tinder to get a, a fire going. Moist towelettes. So I have like the disinfecting wipes, like the Clorox wipes, which you can make these from, you know, uh, paper towels and some bleach and stuff, maybe some bleach and water if you want to dilute it. But basically for washing stuff, disinfecting stuff, cleaning stuff, cleaning your surface areas, if you were, uh, you know, the place was a mess and you needed something like pretty clean to eat off of or work off of or uh, change your baby on, you know, then you have this type of stuff. And, and I'm a big advocate of having uh, bleach around as well. Having garbage bags, maybe not necessarily contractor garbage bags, but your regular kitchen garbage bags that you could use to kind of like, all right, now we got all this garbage, let's get it out of here and kind of like for good sanitary purposes. All right, next on the list is a wrench or pliers for like if you needed to turn off your water pipe or your gas pipe or, or your utilities. Now, you don't have to be Bob the Builder to have some sort of, or poor Bob Vila to have some crazy toolbox. But you can go to your local Home Depot, Lowe's, or Ace Hardware, or whatever, get a small toolbox for about, I don't know, five or 10 bucks, and you probably could find a small, like, beginner tool set of a few wrenches, some pliers, uh, screwdrivers, things like that for, I don't know, 20, 30 bucks. That if, I'm sure if you're a homeowner, you already have this. If you're renting, you may or may not, but uh, it's something that you should have. And man, there's a million videos on how to use each one of them. But a good thing to have in your kit, at the very least, is some sort of wrench. So I like channel locks. Channel locks are these, I think that's the name for them. Um, and I have better pairs. This is just a, a, you know, middle of the road. It's not cheap, it's not, not crazy expensive, but it works in a variety of different, like you need to turn off something big, you need to turn off something small, you gotta use like a set of pliers. Uh, channel locks, great tool, easy to use, easy to uh, manipulate, and it kind of like serves several different purposes, which ideally, any type of thing that you're gonna have in your kit, the more uses that it does, the better. All right, can opener. So imagine having all these cans, and uh, these ones are the best, where you kind of flip the top and peel it off, cool. But the rest of them that don't have that, um, I went on a camping trip once and I brought a bunch of cans. In fact, the only food that I brought was in cans. I brought one can opener, the damn thing broke, and I was like a caveman trying to <laughs> get into it. So. Having a can opener is good, but having more than one is even better. Remember that two is one and one is none. So uh, the next thing on the list is a can opener, but I would recommend having more than one of those. All right, so the next thing on the list is local maps. 
So again, if you're staying in place, then you don't really have to go anywhere. But uh, if your phone went down or your Wi-Fi was down and you couldn't use your phone, which we rely on for everything, if you're trying to tell somebody else how to get to you, maybe like, all right, we're, we're sheltering in place, but we need help to get here and they don't know how to get here, you can go to your local maps and use your maps either to help figure out your plan to get out or to help give somebody else help to get to you by coming in. So this is a bigger atlas that I always keep in my car for, uh, for the roads, uh, you know, for the whole, uh, I think it's the whole Northeast. I'm sorry, the, the whole North America, United States, Canada, and Mexico. All right, this one you probably already have in your pocket or your, your backpack, your briefcase, your pocketbook or whatever. Your cell phone, chargers, and uh, one of those like those extra battery packs. So you have the phone, the charger. Obviously, if you have power, awesome. You can charge that thing all day long. Uh, if power went out, do you have like those, uh, those, I always call them bricks. I don't know if that's the correct word. It's like an extra battery that you charge it, and then it charges your phone. And uh, I have one in my go bag, which is a uh, solar powered one, which works pretty well. Leave it on the, on the dashboard of my car and it'll charge stuff. It'll charge itself. And then from that, you could charge other stuff. All right, masks. So more and more places you have to have a mask to come in or a mask to go, uh, to go visit somebody or, or for whatever reason, if you are a mask wearing person, then you probably have them already. But do you have extras? Do you have spares? And do you have extras and spares for everybody else in the house? So something as simple as a bandana or the, the little blue surgical ones or whatever. But um, make sure that you have a good amount of those in your kit. Again, the kit is something that you go to in the event that like, oh man, like craziness is happening. You can't think straight and you're just going to grab this thing and hope that everything you need is in there. That's why we plan ahead when everything is calm and cool and we have all the time in the world to like go through a list and make sure that we have everything uh, as it's supposed to be. All right, prescription medications. So if you were going to go on vacation, you'd make sure that in your toiletry bag you had whatever prescription meds that you need to take uh, every day, every, you know, twice a day, three times a day, whatever is, you'd have enough for at least as long as you're going away for plus a day or so extra. Hopefully in the event you get stuck there or uh, stuck getting out or you're delayed anywhere along the way. In addition to prescription meds, you'd have to have like your, I don't know, your over-the-counter non-prescription meds. Now in my first aid kit, I have stuff for headache, stuff for fever, cold, diarrhea, like all, you know, the, all the regular stuff, right? And then I use that kit as a ready to go in the event that I had to grab it and run. But then I also keep these bins uh, with my shelter in place kit that there's stuff that I use to refill that stuff. Okay. And it's all stuff that I've gotten from, um, you know, Costco or BJ's, you know, you go there, I have, uh, day quill, night quill, um, you know, stuff for cold and flu stuff for diarrhea, Tylenol, um, aspirin. What's that one called? The, uh, Benadryl, um, heartburn meds and so on. It's like Motrin, the pain relievers, fever, fever reducers, uh, allergy stuff, uh, cough meds, cold meds, all that type of stuff. And again, you know your family best and the things that you guys need or use or might need or might use. And again, part of it is having the kit ready, but the other part is having the stuff that, hey, what if it was you got to stay inside for two weeks? And then you're in there for two weeks and they're like, uh, two more weeks, two more weeks, two more weeks, two more weeks. And again... If you haven't learned anything from last year, I bet that you've at least learned like, oh my God, if I got to stay in here for a while, what stuff am I going to need? And that is your best lesson for going forward. All right, next on the list is eyeglasses. So uh, I just started wearing reading glasses and I could get by without them, but man, they're a lot easier if I have them. But my wife, she wears contacts and glasses and she has a really hard time seeing if she can't. So a good thing to have in your kit or in your bag or wherever is at least one extra set of glasses or contacts, but glasses are better, of course. When it comes to babies, if you have babies in the house, you need to have like obviously formula and diapers and uh, cleaning products and baby wipes and all the things that, hey, you know, all the stuff that goes in a diaper bag. Well, imagine you need a diaper bag that was gonna last you three days or more. And that's the stuff that you would put in your kit. If you got pets in the house, well, do you have food and water for them? If you had to go, do you have like enough food and water to grab something like some sort of container to keep it in to go with you? If your pet uses medicine too, you should have at least three days set aside. Like, don't wait till you're running out. Like, oh man, you, you get a new prescription for them, take a few days worth and put in a separate thing that goes inside your kit. And that way, if that happens and now all of a sudden you're just about out of whatever meds they're typically taking, man, I, I don't know about you or your animals or, or what condition they're in, but um, you know, they're, they're part of your family too. So you wanna make sure that you're uh, prepping for them and, and being prepared for, for their health and safety and comfortability as well. 
Cash and or traveler's checks. Now, I've never used a traveler's check in my whole life. Um, cash, credit cards, but cash is good in the event that, you know, power outage and you can't run a card or, you know, whatever. Just, just cash is king. Um, a good variety of bills too. Like don't just have like, all right, we have a thousand dollars and it's all hundred dollar bills and somebody says I can't break the change for you. So making sure you have, you know, a variety of bills for when you're, you have your money for uh, that rainy day. So I have another video that I did, I don't know, a couple months ago on basically like the first thing that you need to do. Like if God forbid you were really displaced or your, your house burnt down or flood, disaster, whatever it was, and you're like, how do I even start over again? And on there is a list of, uh, it's, it's very long to go into, but the short of it is important family documents such as copies of insurance policies, identification, bank account records saved electronically or in a waterproof portable container. It's not the most fun stuff, but it's very important stuff. So check it out. All right. So the next one is sleeping bag or warm blanket. Now, again, I, if you're home, you got plenty of blankets, I'm sure. Uh, if you're in your car, hopefully you have at least a blanket. Uh, if you're in your go bag or go kit, you should have some sort of a, uh, you know, sleeping bag or sleep, sleep system. But I'm a big fan of, of wool blankets only because uh, even if they get wet, they retain, retain their heat value. So, um, you know, cotton or something gets wet and, and you're still cold, if it's, especially if it's windy. Whereas wool, if it's wet and you're wet and you're trying to like dry off and warm up, you could put a wet wool blanket on you and it'll help you retain your body heat. So again, just food for thought, but you should have at least blankets or sleeping bags uh, for everybody in the house. Complete change of clothing appropriate for your climate and sturdy shoes. So if all you got is flip-flops and you got to go shovel snow, no good. If all you got is like your, your you know, pretty heels or whatever, then you got to go outside and start raking leaves and chopping wood and dragging logs and getting, you know, <laughs> like digging out your car from some crazy hurricane, no good. So good change of clothes. Uh, layers of clothes, stuff that'll keep you warm, stuff that'll keep you dry, stuff that'll help you maintain your core body temperature, but also some sturdy shoes, maybe some like hiking boots or something like that, which put on some good wool socks, uh, merino wool, if wool itches you, put on the merino wool ones. Again, they'll help keep you warm, even if they get a little bit wet. And uh, sturdy boots with good laces that are comfortable for you to walk, hike, or work in. Fire extinguisher. You don't need a, a whole fire hose, but you need something in the event that uh, something in your kitchen catches fire, something in the basement, something in the panel box. Um, anywhere you are, that in the event, I have them all over the house. Each floor has one. Uh, there's one next to the oil burner because that, you know, and the, and the dryer in the laundry room. Like, that's a spot that, man, I hope a fire never happens. But if it did, I, wanna, I don't want to be looking for a fire extinguisher. I'm sure every one of you has one in your kitchen, like under the, you know, on, in one of the cabinets. It's close by in the event that your stove catches fire, you grab something and you could put it out. One, two, three. You should have something next to your bed that if uh, you heard somebody in your house say, oh my God, fire, the first thing you do is you jump out of the bed, you grab your fire extinguisher. Good prepping, right? But again, in your kit, have one close by. Matches in a waterproof container. Uh, keep your matches dry, whether it's in a Ziploc bag or some sort of waterproof container. Um, having a lighter, Bic lighter, you could dry that out pretty quick and get that going even if it got wet. Uh, but again, having some method to uh, either get your grill going, your fire pit, your fireplace, uh, light some candles around the house, smoke a cigar because you need to like de-stress. That's my thing. All right, next one on the list is feminine supplies and personal hygiene items. So ladies, you know which things you guys need and just making sure that you have enough for in case you need it for it to last for a few days. Again, I'm not a girl, so I don't know all about all that stuff, but uh, I live with plenty of girls, so I have an idea and you'll know best which items you need and how much you should have on hand for in the craziest day if you had to last three days uh, w without making it to the store or waiting for Amazon to come deliver, you some, deliver some stuff to you. Personal hygiene items are going to be like stuff to keep yourself clean. Your first base layer is your skin, right? So you want to make sure you're washing your hair and washing your body, and keeping your feet and your hands uh, clean and dry and, and all that stuff. Uh, but brushing your teeth and getting washed and just uh, keeping yourself comfortable too because that goes a long way in some sort of emergency or disaster situation. All right, so the next one is a mess kit. Now, if you've never seen one, this is a mess kit. It's, uh, this one's aluminum. It's kind of cheap. I just grabbed it because it was a good deal and I got them really for my kids' kits. Uh, the ones I have in mind are stainless steel. So one side is like a pot or pan, which you could use to boil water, uh, prepare your, you know, your, your, any canned stuff or any food, heat something up. The other one you use is a plate. I got it with this, uh, 
like a mess utensils kit, which comes with a knife and a fork and a spoon and a can opener. So I'm also big on these Yuko ones. They're UCO, UCO is the name of the company. Fork on one side, spoon on the other side. The side of the fork has a little bit of a serrated edge that you could use uh, as a knife, maybe not as good as that one. Uh, but having something, some sort of kit, again, if you have paper plates and paper forks and knives and that type of stuff, you're good to go, uh, especially for your kit. But again, if you're looking for something that's going to be like, well, I have the kit ready in case we're going to stay in the house, but I also have the kit ready that if I had to grab it and throw it in the car and go with us, uh, this might be a little bit of a better option. You can find them online. They're cheap enough. All right, and the last thing on this list is paper and a pencil. Now, paper and a pencil will be for use for taking notes, leaving a note on your front door, uh, leaving it on your windshield or your, your side window. Hey, uh, this is where we're at. This is where we're going. Um, hey, this is the phone number. If I'm not here, you could call me at this number or, hey, I'll be back in a half hour. Million uses for having a, a pencil and paper. Pencil is good because it writes pretty much in all weather, never runs out of ink. Uh, Sharpie markers and Write in the Rain. That's a company, Write in the Rain, R-I-T-E, Write in the Rain. Uh, they make papers and pens that, that use for all weather. So even on, the paper never really gets wet, wet, and you can write on it even if it does. Again, this list is uh, ready.gov's suggested list. You know, there's some things on there that it didn't mention, but maybe it was in there and I, I, I missed it somehow, but like toilet paper, right? Paper towels, uh, cleaning products, like stuff to, again, wash more of your house and wash more of yourself and uh, mop and bleach and I don't know I, I, I went through a lot of bleach in the last last year or so um, because regardless of whatever the news is telling you bleach has worked for a long long time and it kills everything man so uh, I, I like to use bleach as a, as a cleaning product for uh, especially if I'm like trying to really disinfect something again this is ready.gov's suggestions if there's stuff that I missed that you know you have in your kit or things that like you're, you're watching this for the first time and saying, man, I'm new to this and even I know to make sure I have, let me know in the comments section below. Just uh, again, if you're new to the channel, it's a school. Five Elements Tactical is a school. And um, one of my favorite things is how everybody that watches, all the subscribers, you guys will type questions and before I get a chance to answer it, somebody else hops in and then it's always nice always polite, good respect, good camaraderie, and uh, you're my warriors, and, I, and I, I love you guys. So again, if there's some stuff that's missing, again, this is not all of my stuff, but uh, again, if you, you're spotting something like, ah, Kiyoshi, you forgot to, hey, put it in the comment section below, all right? Well, if you made it this far and you like what I'm teaching and preaching, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and like this video. If you're loving it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you got to have it, make sure you hit the bell notification button and the little thing where it says all notifications so YouTube will let you know when the next video drops. If you're really digging it and you want more, you can find me on all social media platforms at 5 Elements Tactical. That's all I got for now, Warriors. So until our paths cross again, pray for the best, prepare for the rest. I'm Kiyoshi Dave Herman with 5 Elements Tactical Training. Thanks for watching.